Okay, I have a 2004 Dodge Neon here, and I was doing the timing belt on this. It had broken, and this is pretty much the risk you run if you go over the 80 or 100,000 mile mark. And the bad thing about the the Neon, it's an interference, so it could mess your valves up. Now these have been um, checked out and appear to be okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put another timing belt on. Now also while you're at it, you're going to want to get you a new tensioner pulley and this uh, get, get another water pump because those will also lock up and you know the bearings will go out in those tensioners. And here's where your where your new new tensioner will go. Um, also this um, engine mount on this one was in really bad shape, just completely gone. And if you're having a lot of growling, rattling noise, then this could could be the culprit. Um, you know, these things aren't very expensive to replace. Um, the main uh, issue with getting into this is getting this piece right here off. And uh, you have to really jack this engine up quite a ways to be able to get access to those bolts. And this is kind of what all you know, you're going to have to remove uh, to get to this. And in order just to get access to your to your water pump, you're going to have to remove this back cover and everything, which means you'll have to get your cam sprocket and then the back cover. Um, like I said, an impact wrench will really help you out uh, as far as getting stuff apart. Um, but basically, on these, you know, the first thing you'll want to do is uh, get your get it up on some blocks or jack stand, and get your tire off, and you'll have this cover right here that that sets up right in here, and you'll want to remove that, and then you'll be able to see all this, and then you'll go ahead and get your engine supported, and then just go about removing your engine mount. This is the main engine mount right up in here and it's like covered by this cap and you'll take that off and there'll be a T55 and you go ahead and just get that one out remove your lower just kind of drop it down and then take this top one I've got laying right over here take that one loose and then you can just go about um, removing stuff out of your way this power steering pump has some bolts um, in the front that you have to get through. There's like three bolts here and then there's a couple in the back and you'll want to just get this thing completely loose and move it out of the way. Now another thing I do when I'm jacking this thing up there's the connector to the the air compressor and I'll go ahead and take that loose so I don't run a risk of uh, breaking that and a lot of times I'll go ahead and remove these clamps so just in case it snags on something, I'm not breaking anything, it'll have a little bit of movement. And also this, this AC line. Um, but the main, the main thing you'll have, uh, you'll have to go and rent you one of these Chrysler pullers if you don't have one. Uh, you can get them at AutoZone and you, you have these, these bars that go up in there so you can, you can pull that, um, pulley out of there. Now on this, with this particular one, I have to use a little little bit after I get it um, all broken loose to kind of pull it on off of there. Um, but you know, it's really not that difficult. Um, usually takes me a, a few hours you know, to get all this stuff loose and I've just, I've got my parts and everything so I'm going to go about uh, putting this back together and first thing that you'll want to do absolutely is put that engine mount in first while you've got everything out uh, just because there's just uh, so little room there it just makes it a lot easier to go ahead and put that in first and I'll kind of uh, do another video as I start putting this back together thanks okay I'm back here with a 2004 Dodge Neon I just got 
this main engine mount put in and you'll want to put you some Loctite back on these bolts and get this really tight um, I'm getting ready to put the, the water pump on it'll have to go on before you can put any of your back covers or anything it's like the first thing uh, I went ahead and cleaned that surface really well and uh, took some really fine sandpaper made sure there was no debris or anything for this seal and also I previously took a little bit of of this silicone and I kind of dabbed it in spots all around this and it'll just help hold that, that that seal in place so it's not moving around when you go to try to tighten it um, and here's the old one I just put the bolts right back where they go so you don't get them mixed up it's I think they're all pretty much the same except for this one top one and I'm gonna go ahead and use a little bit of this medium uh, thread locker just to make sure we don't have any of them coming out in the future um, so that's where we're at at this point yeah, I'm back with my neon here I just wanted to show these timing marks real quick you'll notice the arrows on the crank gear and and the one on the engine there you want to make sure that's lined up and then we come up top and there's a mark right here on this cam sprocket that's really hard to see that's going to line up with the notch right here on the cover and you might want to take and put you like a white dot or something on here to make it easier to see but you just want to make sure that's lined up and then the bottom one and you can see I've went ahead and got the timing belt on at this point and I'll just follow up okay and at this point I'm putting on this um, hard to get to timing cover and just wanted to show you what I was talking about how far you have to get this thing up and you just want to jack this thing up to where you can get all these boats in and I just jacked it up just enough where they all slid in and you can kind of see you know about how far I've got this this thing up so um, just you know get it up high enough you know keep an eye on things to, but get it up high enough where you can get those boats in. I'm just getting ready to put that on and then I'll follow up from there.